Hey everyone, I'm working on rolling into the weekend as productively as possible. We have some funky weather ahead of us thanks to a tropical depression in the Gulf. So I've got a DIY, I've got some meal prep, going to work on the garden a bit, and have a little fun in between, weather permitting. I'm not sure why, but my peppers got a little stunted back in February-ish. I'm thinking maybe the long guys sprayed some chemicals, not sure. Anyway, I'm going to replant some seeds and get with it on this to-do list and see what I can accomplish. So here's the to-do list. Like I said, it's a combo of DIYs I started last Friday, some meal prepping and some other odds and ends, and hopefully I will squeeze in everything. We'll see how it goes. First up are the DIYs. This is an inspo pick of a ceramic or clay knot that people use in their decor stylings. And I love these things. You know, it's fun to have some unusual things. I haven't really seen anything quite like this in the stores, but in searching them online, gosh, these things are pricey. 40, 50, 60, 90 bucks, you know, depending on where you want to go with it, right? So I thought, eh, that looks easy enough. I bet I can handle banging that thing out myself so I started on that last Friday also I saw these ceramic or clay or cement beads around on everyone's DIYs and YouTube stylings I love those things of course I've been sleeping under a rock on all of the decor stuff it seems like and when I caught Jenna Pierce her uh, decor styling of these clay beads. She did a DIY on those and I fell in love. So I decided to get some clay, which I ordered off of Amazon, which happens to be the same price as what you can get it for at Walmart, around 10 bucks for five pounds. And then I also picked up at Walmart some jute string to do the beads with. This was only four bucks. And between the two, I still have about a third of the clay left. And gosh, who knows how many projects worth of that jute string. So really, both of these projects turned out to be very inexpensive. Okay, so I'm going to start with rolling the clay to make a long rope that I can turn into that double knot. And the double knot that I saw a DIY on is sort of like one of those infinity scarves you know you take a, a circle of this clay and then tie it into the knot so here you see me putting the two ends together just because this is a small ish table and that's a long roll of clay so i went at it in two pieces and keep a little jar of water next to you that you can dip your fingers in I found is a, the real trick to working with this air dry clay. So here I am tying this clay which you know you just have to be gentle with it because it is very malleable and could break apart and here I go tying it into the knot and once you get it to this stage you just sort of have to gently edge it into the shape you want, sort of slowly tightening that knot. And then once I got it into the shape I liked, I went in with the water and smoothed the edges down. And I found a little paintbrush dipped in the water worked well for smoothing those edges between the two pieces of the clay rope. You know, can't get your fingers in there very well. And now I am going to start in on the clay balls. And I loved this project. I actually really enjoyed myself on this one. It's one of those you can't screw up. You're just rolling balls of clay in your hands like you would if you were getting ready to make a cookie or something. And I used the end of the paintbrush to poke the holes in each of these that I will eventually be pulling the jute rope through. And kind of like with the rope, once you get them shaped and then that hole poked, 
you have to go in with your finger and a little water and kind of smooth the edges out where you poke that hole because you know how that is. It, it kind of comes out on the end in a rough way. So you want that smoothed out before you leave them on the tray to dry. And this was a labor of love. I really enjoyed myself. I had a YouTube video going of one of my favorite channels and just kept working my way through these. And, you know, the longest part of this process really is the drying time with this air dry clay, right? So I just kept working my through, making each little bead. And I made a total of 16 because that's what Jenna Pierce made. And it didn't take as long as I thought it would. It was probably maybe a half hour to form the beads and kept going and once I got them all onto this baking tray I took them outside and let them dry in the sun it was a gorgeous weekend last Friday and Saturday which I thought might help them dry quicker but it didn't they were still wet and got finished this weekend so on to the next DIY project I bought this vase and another one at Ross a couple of weeks ago. I couldn't believe what a good deal this was for such a large vase. And I took it outside, gave it a coat of black hammered spray paint as a base. And then uh, this other one, I gave a base of uh, beige paint. And I'm gonna use both of these in my bedroom. And here's a look at my paints that I used and the beads drying there in the back still. This was all a week ago, Friday. So here I am now inside with one of the faces and I'm doing the usual aged vessel technique with the various paint colors. I'm gonna dab this on and I wanted to start with the base of this vase being a little darker as you can see. It started out blue and I just didn't bother getting that side of it a really dark coat and I just kept dabbing the colors as you've seen me done if you've seen other videos with the age vessel DIYs this is just one of those it takes some time you have to have patience it's really all about the layering of the colors and just keep going until you get to the point where you really like it. I used a combination of espresso brown, some cream, and some white on this vase. And I did the top edge kind of like the bottom edge. I went for a little darker look so it would look like it had really been out there aging in the elements for some time. And then I decided my little fox, if you watched my dining room update, you probably saw this little fox. He had a kind of a terracotta tone to him in addition to some lighter look. And I just decided he was a little too orange for me. Look, did the same thing to this little bell that I picked up at a thrift shop for 99 cents. Now here I am with the black vase and I am brushing on white paint here because I kind of want it to have that streaky look that you see a lot of the aged vessels have before I start in with a little bit of dabbing and spreading of the paint. And I just kind of kept going like that. The only color I really used on this to speak of was white because I wasn't trying to give it that sort of dirty look that a lot of the faces have. I really wanted just more of black with sort of a, a chalky look, if you will. And the reason why I'm DIYing this face is to repurpose these orchids that I bought years ago at TJ Maxx and they came in tiny little vases. So here's a look at the finished face with these orchids that I reconfigured purposely to put on that chest in my bedroom and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Of course my YAs think the orchids are too tall but <laughs> I don't think they understand the nature of the beast when it comes to orchids. Oh, here's a close-up of my orchid pot. I really love the way that turned out even though I'm not going for darks in there. Now here is the before on the vase with an Easter lily 
that I bought a couple of years ago and that thing has just been so happy and so overgrown but this pot I bought before I got into the aged vessels and it has too much of an aztec -y boho look for me so here's the aged vessel that I did just kind of finishing it up and I'm real happy with the way this one turned out too I really like the gentle neutral colors and the vase doesn't look that much bigger than the boho-ish one that the plant was in but it is actually a couple inches wider it's just hard to make that come across in these videos but you can take my word for it right and here's a look at the plant repotted in the aged vessel and doesn't it look so much happier just being in that bigger pot and now here I am spray painting these beads because we finally made it to Friday a week after I started making the beads and I am just painting this knot with white acrylic paint and while it dries I'm getting with it on some of my food prepping here I'm making some banana muffins just because I had three overripe bananas I did banana bread a couple of weeks ago so doing banana muffins now and everybody knows basically how these are made so I'm not going to bother giving you all the details on this just to give you a quick look as I work through getting them prepped and I really love the silicone muffin tins, don't you guys? If you haven't used those, you definitely have to give those a whirl. So I've got these going into the muffin cups, and I'm going to slip those in the oven. But first I want to put some topping on these. I like sort of a streusel topping with walnuts and brown sugar, a little flour, and my daughters love the little mini chocolate chips on their banana muffins, which just isn't my thing. That's just too messy for me. And I'm a purist, I guess. I don't want bananas and chocolate together. So here I am putting on the streusel topping. And I'm going to pop those in the oven. Then I'm going to start on making the baked apples that I use on my yogurt bowls during the week, which I had on my meal prep list last week and just not got around to. So while the oven is warm with the muffins baking, I want to take advantage of getting these apples going. I was really surprised how well those green apples held up. They were in a bowl on my bookshelf for I kid you not at least six weeks maybe eight weeks and those things look fresh as a daisy so I was real happy to be able to get those used up before I had to waste any and then I had three straggler cosmic crisp apples that I used up as well and this is just sort of a dump I don't measure I use sugar-free syrup and probably a tablespoon or two of cinnamon and a little pumpkin pie spice and give it a stir around and throw it in the oven for about 90 minutes on 350. Now here I'm whipping up some hummus. I've made that on my channel before. I'll try to remember to put a link down below in case anyone's interested. A look at the after on the banana muffins. They turned out really well. The girls and I had some of those for breakfast this morning. Today is Saturday and these turned out really well. Now I'm painting my beads. I want them to have sort of a stone meets travertine look, if you will. And I decided to go with a neutral versus a gray color, just because I think it'll have more options in my decor. And as the beads are drying, I'm getting my apples out of the oven. I'll put these in Ziploc bags and throw them in the freezer. Getting out some frozen dinner rolls to make garlic knots to go with our Tuscan chicken dinner that I'll be whipping up tonight. Just let them thaw out and tie those into a knot. It was a naughty weekend. <laughs> and here I am getting the jute string ready to thread through the beads now that they've dried. And I used three six foot long strands and as you'll see here I taped off the end of 
the strands on one end so that I could use it sort of like a jimmy rig needle to pull through the hole in the beads. And with this first bead, I'm tying a knot at the end to keep the bead on the strings. And then as I go along, you'll see, I will be tying a knot with this jute string that again i got this whole roll for four bucks and i only used maybe 15 20 percent of this roll and i'm tying knots in between each of the beads to copycat my inspo picks and i really enjoyed this part of the process making the knots was relatively easy slipping the beads on there was even easier and then when I get all of the beads on here, I'll create two tassels and tie those on each end, as you'll see. But getting the beads on here was a piece of cake and I really enjoyed the process. And here's a look at the strand with the knots in between and the finished strand. Now I'm gonna hold it up so you can kind of get a relative idea of how long it is with the 16 beads that are roughly the size of ping pong balls, maybe slightly smaller. Funny how they exactly fit around the bottom of that picture. So now I'm making the tassels for the ends of the beads. And you know, you've probably seen this before on other videos, but you just wrap a bunch of rounds of the jute string around your fingers or a book or whatever you want to use. And I used about 20 wraparounds, if you will. And then just make sure you kind of pull it tight so that the ends are even. And then you cut off a piece of string and tie that in a knot around all of the wrapped jute in one spot and cut off the excess string. And then you need to uh, make sure it's really tight and kind of work that knot so that it's on the underneath side of this round of string so that the knot doesn't show so readily and then just cut it on the opposite end from where you tied it and if some of the strands are longer than others, you can always even that out after the fact, but you know, try to get it roughly even as you start out. And now you wanna take another piece of string so that you can form the head of the tassel, if you will, and just wrap that string around about an inch below the top of where you tied the string to hold the rounds together, if that makes sense. I'm sorry, it's not a very good visual here. It's hard to film while you're doing a DIY and make sure you're getting the visuals in there well, but you know, we do our best, right? So here I am wrapping that string around the head or to form a head, wrap it three, four times around and then tie it in a knot and tie it as tight as you can get because you don't want it coming undone. Then trim off those ends and now it's just a matter of making a second tassel because I wanted one on each end. You don't have to have tassels on your beads. You can just leave a knot on the end and cut the strings off but I prefer the tassel look and now I am using my scissors to get the string that I had left at the end of the beads through the top of the tassels and I'm tying that on with the two strings at the end of my beads. And again, more knotting and tie it as tight as you can. And just do the same thing for the other end, of course. And now here we have our finished product. I'm so happy with the way it turned out. This project cost me a total of about 450, including the double looped knot that I made. So can't get better than that. Now here's a look at the product styled on my console table. I'm so happy with the way they turned out. And that sort of a 
travertine meets stone aged vessel look I think goes so well with my neutral console decor there and if you recall in the inspo pick the beads that Jenna Pierce had done and also the ones on Pottery Barn were gray but I have enough gray going on on the sideboard that I felt like if I made these in a neutral tannish whitish color I'd have more styling options more places to use them I got that little watercolor off of Amazon for 19 bucks I'll link it down below and here's a look at the way my double knot turned out I painted it all white and then sort of dabbed on a little gray here and there I was just trying to go for almost like a wood look I think if I do another one of those, I'll make the rope thicker. But, you know, for a first try, I thought it turned out really well. And I'm really happy with the way it sort of ups my style decor game there. And here's a look at it from the side, just so you can get a quick peek at how it looks as you're walking toward that area from the living room. And I think I am going to break down and buy a real wooden bowl there to replace my, my DIY faux wooden bowl. But I'm really happy overall with the way all of these things turned out. And here's a peek at the garlic knots before they went in the oven. They were marinated in olive oil, garlic, Italian seasoning. And here's a look at our finished dinner. This is Tuscan chicken, which is a one pan dish with some instant mashed potatoes that I need to work on using up. The garlic knot, broccoli, and we watched a J-Lo movie called The Mother last night that was so good. It was a great evening. Now here I am Saturday working on getting the quiche made. I am putting some frozen bacon that I've just chopped up into this pan to brown. I'm making a quiche Lorraine using up that last frozen store-bought pie crust that has been riding in my freezer since last holiday and I am going to put this bacon on the stove and get this pie crust rolled out now that it's thawed out a little bit but I think maybe I let it sit a little too long or maybe it was in the freezer a little too long because it was kind of coming apart so I squished it all together put a little flour down on my baking mat and rolled it out which definitely improved the texture and then I've got this going in the pie pan and gonna give it a little bit of a pinched up crust you know how it is with these store bots you don't have much to work with there but I did my best and here's a look at the finished quiche the girls just came home a few minutes ago from being at the gym and shopping and they were starving I was shocked they didn't buy chick-fil-a they're chowing down on this right now as I make this video and here's a look at my to-do list so far on Saturday afternoon at 3 30 I'm plugging away at this thing Got a few more items to bang out today and tomorrow, but feeling really good with my progress. And here's one last peek at my fun little console table with my DIY projects. I hope you guys are having a great weekend. Take care.